Hey, JNM here with a new beginner tutorial for programming Blender add-ons with Python. We are going to create a real-world example and as you might know I'm using Visual Studio Code as IDE and an extension named Blender Development by Jacques Lucke. The most important keyboard shortcut is Ctrl and Shift P. With that you have the options to start Blender with your current add-on in development and another option is to create a new add-on and this is what we are going to do right now. I created this new folder for the add-on and I named it Python Modifier Util. Because the add-on will have two features, applying and removing all the modifiers that are attached to an object. So let's get started. I press Ctrl, Shift and P and then select Blender New Add-on. I start with a simple template, which is just creating a simple init file. You will see that in a moment. The name of the add-on I set to, let's say, jmodifierutil, and then the name of the author, which is jnm. I select this folder, and here we have the generated init file. All right, and when we start Blender now, pressing Ctrl, Shift and P, and then select Blender Start. You see I have quite a few installations on my PC. I choose this one Blender 2.92 and then I can go to the Preferences, then to the Add-ons section, and here you can already see the add-on that I'm developing. Of course it does nothing at the moment, but it is registered. Ok, next step is to add the features. We need operators to apply and remove the modifiers that are attached to objects. So create a new Python file for the operators. Let's call it jmu-op. Don't forget the py extension. And then another file for the panel that will have the two buttons to execute the operators. Let's call this file jmu-panel. Ok, I start the implementation with the UI with the panel. First of all, I import the module bpy, which is the main module for Blender Python development. And then we need the panel class, which is defined in the BPY types. For the panel, we derive a new class from the panel type, and the name of the class has to follow a certain naming convention. For panels, it has to contain the text underscore pt underscore. Just like that, and for the base class, we use panel. Ok, great. Now we have to add a few properties. First, the BL space type which defines that we want to see the panel in the 3D viewport. So I set it to View 3D. Then the region type, which I set to UI for the panel. Then we have the BL label, which is displayed in the panel's header. And then the BL category that you can see on the tab in the sidebar on the right. Ok, this is the info we need for the panel. Now comes the draw method. And in this method you define how the UI will look like. For instance, to define the rows and the columns and the buttons and so on. To define rows and columns, you can use the layout property that comes with the panel base class. And I want to have two buttons in one row and two columns. Very easy, first I get a row from the layout. And with the row I can create a column. And to this column I want to add an operator, which will be displayed as a button. We don't have the operator now, but we are going to write it. And let's say the ID will be object.applyAllMods for applying all modifiers. Now you can define a text for the button to be displayed. I keep it simple, I call it apply all. And then I go ahead and define the second column for removing all modifiers. And I will call this one cancel all mods. Just copy and paste, I'm lazy. And with this the UI is completed and we have to implement the operators now. I go to the file that we created for the operators, again I import the BPY, and this time we have to import a different type and this is operator. Again a class that we have to derive from to create our operators. It also follows a naming convention. The name of operator classes has to contain underscore ot underscore. And again we need properties. First the ID. This is the one that we use to display the operator in the panel and as you know the first one is object.applyAllMods. Then we can define a label which I set to apply all, which is used also in the panel, so it was redundant to define the text there. And then we have a description which is displayed as a tooltip when we hover with the mouse cursor over the button in the panel. Great, now we have the properties and the next thing is to define two methods an execute method and a poll method. 
I start with the execute, it has two parameters, self and context. Self just indicates that this is a method defined for the class and the implementation I will do in a moment. Let's go to the poll method. This is a bit special because it is a so-called class method. It is much like a static method, not bound to the object, you just have to add a decorator called class method to use it. Poll returns a boolean that defines if the operator should be enabled. In our case I just want to enable it if the active object is in object mode. So what I do is to get the object from the context and check if the mode is set to object. And only in this case I return true. Ok, now comes the implementation for the execute method. In this I get the active object, then I loop over the modifiers for the object and call an operator to apply the modifier and as a parameter I pass the name of the current modifier in the loop. Then we have to return the state of the operator, which is in our case finished. And that's it for the implementation of the operator. Now let's go back to the init file, set the properties for the add-on and then register the classes for the panel and the operators. First of all I set the category to object, because the add-on is dealing with objects. And the location is the 3D view. Ok, now let's register and unregister the classes for the panel and the operators. Register is called when the add-on is loaded and unregister is called when it is unloaded. Ok, so let's add a tuple for the classes that I want to register. But before we have to import the classes from the modules, from the files. First the operator to apply the modifiers and then the panel. Great, and now we can add these classes to the tuple classes. Alright, and the last thing we have to do is to call register class and unregister class for each of these classes. The method is defined in the BPY utils and I call it for every class in a loop. The same for unregister and that's it. Great, so let's switch to Blender. You see we don't have to reload. The extension is updating the add-on on the fly. So you see we have the new panel J modifier util and the button apply all. I add a breakpoint here to the operator class so that we can see what's going on when it is executed so we can step through the code. And then I go ahead and add some modifiers, a bevel and an array modifier that we can apply then using the add-on. To add the modifiers I use my JMesh tools add-on, but of course you can add these as you like. Ok, the array and the bevel is added. You can see both here in the modifiers panel. And if I want to apply all modifiers I would have to go to apply in the dropdown for every modifier. But now with the new add-on we can just go to the panel and press apply all. And have a look at this, the code is executed. Here we are at the breakpoint that we set and now we can step through the code and analyze the variables and yeah, the whole call stack. You can press F10 to go to the next line while the code is executed and you can see the current values of the variables. Very comfortable way to develop your add-ons. Ok, this seems to work. I press F5 to continue the execution of the add-on. And here on the right side we see that there are no more modifiers added, they are all applied. And then I go to edit mode and yeah, the geometry is generated. Great, we have a working add-on with a real use case. Now I undo the apply of the modifiers and we implement the last operator to remove all modifiers that are attached to an object. Which is now pretty simple, we can just copy the first operator and we can rename it instead of apply, I use cancel. Also rename ID, label and description. The only thing that differs is the implementation of the execute method. But this is even simpler, we don't have to loop over the modifiers to remove them. There's already a method in the API for this purpose and this is called clear. Ok, that's it. What's left is to add the class in the init file, so that it is registered and unregistered. And in the panel we already added the operator that now exists. Ok, here's the button, I select this object, then press the button clear all and here we go, all modifiers are removed and we return to the plane object. 
Okay, guys, I hope you like it. I think I will add a functionality like that to my JMesh Tools add-on so you don't have to recode it. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit that notification bell. If you have any questions, add these to the comments below. Follow me on my Instagram, Twitter and Facebook. Support the channel by joining as a member or becoming my patron. This would be great. And I'll see you guys on JNM.